Hundreds of New South Wales health workers, paramedics and cleaners went on strike across the state yesterday, calling out Labor for failing to remove the 3% or 2.5% public sector wages cap they promised to get rid of during the election. It comes as the New South Wales government announced politicians and senior bureaucrats would not get a pay rise for at least two years, so $260 million can be redirected into schools and hospitals and also pay for those wage rises on the way. Joining me live now is the New South Wales Liberal Party leader Mark Speakman. Thanks so much for your time. So, first morning, of all, Laura. the first question Do you support abolishing this wages cap? Well, uh, we think the wages cap offered flexibility to public services workers uh, and to the taxpayer. Uh, it was always possible under our wages policy uh, to go beyond 3% or 3.5% if there were productivity gains. What we don't know is uh, what, if any, productivity gains the, the government is asking for at the moment. Um, Chris Minns went to the last election uh, promising to get rid of uh, the wages cap, but we don't know what exactly he has promised the unions. We don't know what pay rises he is offering, and we mm. still don't know how he is going to afford it. OK, aren't you having a bet each way, though, here? On the one hand, uh, you're being critical for the industrial action, and uh, but on the other hand, you're saying the government should agree to pay increases? Well, it's, it's the government's wages policy, not ours. Mr Minns went to the election uh, promising uh, what he said was a fairer and better deal for frontline workers in New South Wales, for public sector workers generally. We now know that the HSU, the Health Services Union, uh, says that the Parate government was offering a better deal to essential workers than the Minns government. Uh, we have the Paramedics Association saying that, that it was all political bluster and spin. Uh, so you just got to ask, uh, has Mr Minns gone to the election misleading the voters? and misleading health workers and misleading frontline workers. It's a new term and you're the leader now. So do you agree with abolishing this wages cap? Would you do it? Well, my, my job as opposition leader is to hold the government to account. Uh, they have made promises before the election. They made a, a promise they were going to get rid of uh, the wages cap. But we don't know what uh, secret promises they've made to union leaders. What what did they promise union leaders in terms of uh, the wage rise? What pay increases have they offered and how they are going to afford it? Do you accept that it does take a little bit of time to get all these ducks in a row to make this happen? I mean, the union certainly don't accept it at the moment, but you know how uh, the wheels of government turn and how slow they can be. Do you have a little bit of sympathy here? Well, uh, it might have been different if Mr Mintz had not gone to the election. He went to the election promising to get rid of the wages cap. Uh, so he must have had something in mind. Why has it taken this long to resolve the issue? Why has he not spoken to Jared Hayes at the Health Services Union for at least 10 days? Why doesn't he pick up the phone and sort this out? Well, you mentioned Jared Hayes. I asked him this morning, has any headway being made? His reply was, not from my perspective. The complaint in, in, internally, and I'm sure has been put to uh, Mr Minns, is what are they talking about? They're kind of quibbling over whether any wage rise includes super or, or doesn't as well. Um, and it might just amount to 1% more than what they were getting um, under the, the Perite government. Is that your understanding? Well, well, I don't know. I, I can't say what my understanding is because Mr Mintz has not been transparent. He is not okay. coming clean uh, with the health service union, uh, with the taxpayer, with the voter, uh, what what he intends to do. Now, if if the pay rise into, ends up only being 4%, well, that's half a percent more than under our wages cap without even extra productivity. So all this bluster before the election about a fairer and better deal for frontline workers will come to naught. And it, it amounts to what Mr Hayes says, that what the Perite government was offering was better than what Mr Minns is offering. It's a, fraud, it's a fraud on the voter and it's a fraud on health and essential workers. OK, uh, let me ask you about The Voice, because last time we spoke about it, you wanted to go through um, the report from the committee. So oh. what is your position now? Will you be voting no? Will you be campaigning against it? Uh, well, look, I don't, uh, wherever I land, I don't anticipate being an active campaigner. But uh, as a public figure uh, in Australia, I will be stating a position uh, well ahead, well ahead of the referendum, which at the moment is expected to be in mid-October. Uh, I'm speaking to uh, different groups, different parties to get their views. And when I finish that process, I'll announce, I'll announce my position. So I've started that consultation process and I want to see that through. But I, I have read the Parliamentary Committee report and I'll be speaking to interested parties about it. Did that sway you either way? Well, as I said, I want to talk to uh, proponents and opponents and particularly uh, Indigenous groups 
to understand their perspective and then I'll announce the position. But at the end of the day, uh, it's not about what politicians think or say. The Constitution no. is our founding document and uh, it ultimately it's a matter for the voters. I'll okay. certainly state a position as I should, but I'm, I'm not going to be um, you know, thrusting that position in people's faces. OK, when will that be, do you think? Sooner rather than well, later? Sooner, yeah, sooner, sooner rather than later, but I want to finish that consultation process uh, okay. and, and hear from uh, interested parties. Uh, and you said you didn't anticipate playing an active role in campaigning either way. Does that mean you won't be driving a, a no campaign or a yes campaign at all? I, I, don't, I, I don't anticipate driving a campaign either way, uh, but as someone uh, who uh, is a senior counsel, uh, has you know, legal experience, uh, is in a position of uh, of uh, public exposure. I think I have a moral duty. To, I have a moral duty to uh, tell people uh, what I think um, uh, about the proposal, uh, the way I intend to vote, and then I'll let people make their own judgment. Mark Speakman, good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Laura.